All right, this is Marty from Blue Lightning TV. I'm going to show you how to place anything into a snow globe. I provided this Photoshop template that you can download. Its link is in my video's description or project files. It includes two layers, a background that includes the snow globe stand and the glass globe. It also includes four alpha channel shapes, the entire globe on the stand, the inside of the globe, the inside of the full globe, and the globe itself. We'll use the bottom three channels in this tutorial. When you click the link for the template, you may just see one image, but once you download the Photoshop file, you'll see all the layers and all the channels. I also included this photo of a castle that we use for this project. Once you complete the project, feel free to replace the castle with anything you want. The first step is to separate the castle and the foreground from the background by making a selection around them. There are many ways to do this depending on the version of Photoshop you're using and the characteristics of your photo. I already created the selection for us and saved it in the Channels panel. To access it, open the Channels panel. If you don't see it, go to Window and Channels. Control click or Command click the Alpha 1 channel to select its shape. Then open back the Layers panel. Open your Move tool by pressing V on your keyboard and drag the castle onto the tab of the snow globe template. Without releasing your mouse or pen, drag it down and release. You'll notice a slight fringe surrounding the edge of it. To remove it, go to Layer, Matting, and Defringe. Defringe it one pixel. Next, we'll reduce its size by pressing Ctrl or Command T to open our Transform tool. At the top, make sure the chain link icon is active between the transform's width and height. This links them together. In either field, type in 62% and press Enter or Return twice. You'll see the reason for reducing its size in a few minutes. Let's position it approximately here. We'll convert the castle into a smart object so we can modify it non-destructively. To do this, click the icon at the upper right of the Layers panel and click Convert to Smart Object. Open the Channels panel and Control or Command click the thumbnail of the Inside Globe channel to select its shape. Open back the Layers panel and click the Layer Mask icon to make a layer mask of the selection next to the active layer. Unlink the castle and the layer mask. Make the castle active and go to Filter and Lens Correction. Open the Custom tab and in the Remove Distortion field type in minus 60. The distortion did two things. It made the castle appear bigger and it warped it into a fisheye shape. I'll reposition it to here. Go to Filter, Blur, and Smart Blur. This filter applies a blur radius to each pixel using a threshold to determine where the blur should be applied. Make the radius 25, the threshold 30, and the quality low. Go back to Filter, Noise, and Add Noise. Make the amount 8%, Gaussian, and Monochromatic. Go back to Filter one more time, click Blur, and Gaussian Blur. Blur it one pixel. Next, we'll adjust the castle's exposure, but before we do, let's save some space in the Layers panel by collapsing the Smart Filters. Click the Adjustment Layer icon and click Exposure. An Adjustment Layer affects all the channels below them in the Layers panel, so if we want it to affect just the one layer below it, we'll need to restrict it or clip it to that layer. 
The quickest way to do this is to click the clipping mask icon. Another way is to go to Layer and create clipping mask. Make the exposure 0.5 and the gamma correction 0.8. Gamma correction mainly affects the midtones. Next, we'll distort the background inside the globe. Make the globe layer active and drag it to the top. Make the mantle layer active and hide the castle. Open the channels panel and control or command click the globe thumbnail to select its shape. Open back the layers panel and press control or command J to cut that circular shape from the mantle and place it onto its own layer. We'll convert it into a smart object and double click the thumbnail to open its source image. Make a copy of it and control or command click the thumbnail to select its shape. Click the layer mask icon to make a layer mask of the selection. Click the chain link icon to unlink the layer and the layer mask and make the layer active. Go to filter, blur, and Gaussian blur. Blur it 10 pixels. Make the layer mask active and open your brush tool. We want black to be our foreground color. If your foreground and background colors are inverted, press X. Open your brush picker and pick a soft round brush. We'll adjust its size in a moment. Make its hardness 0% and its opacity and flow both 100%. To make your brush bigger or smaller, make sure the caps lock key is off and press the right or left bracket key on your keyboard. Make its size 1100 pixels. Go to the center and click. Close the smart object. When you see this message, click yes to save the changes. Go to Filter, Distort, and Spherize. Drag the slider all the way to the left, which warps it into a concave shape, and repeat the filter by pressing Ctrl-Alt-F on Windows or Command-Ctrl-F on a Mac. Then press Enter or Return. Open the Channels panel, and control or command click the thumbnail of the inside full globe channel to select its shape. Open back the layers panel and click the layer mask icon to make a layer mask of the selection. Click off the chain link icon and make the spherized layer active. Press control or command T to open your transform tool. If you see this message, it's just letting us know that the spherize effect will be temporarily turned off while using the transform tool. Just click OK. In either the transform's width or height, type in 200%, then press Enter or Return twice. Make the castle visible. If you want to slide the background inside the globe up or down, Press the up or down arrow keys on your keyboard. Next, we'll darken the bottom of the globe. Make the globe active and make a new layer above it. We'll drag a copy of this layer mask next to the top layer by pressing and holding Alt or Option as you drag it to the top. Reduce the empty layer's opacity to 40%. It'll make the black stroke that will be brushing along the bottom of the globe 40% in opacity. Press B to open back your brush tool and reduce its size to 300 pixels. Brush a shallow arc over the bottom of the globe. Next, we'll create the snowflakes. Make a new layer. We'll place it into a folder by pressing Ctrl or Command G. Let's name it Snow. We'll place a copy of the layer mask of the inside full globe next to the Snow folder 
by again pressing and holding Alt or Option as we drag it onto the folder layer. Make the empty layer active. We'll fill it with black, and since our foreground color is black, press Alt or Option plus Delete. Convert it into a smart object. Go to Filter, Noise, and Add Noise. The amount is 100%, Gaussian, and Monochromatic. Go back to Filter, Blur, and Gaussian Blur. Blur it one pixel. Click the Adjustment Layer icon and click Levels. Clip it to the Noise layer. I'll drag the Input Black level to 85, the Input White level to 160, and the Input Midtones to 0.4. Feel free to adjust the amounts for the snow in your snow globe. Shift-click the Noise layer to make it active as well, and convert them into one smart object. Change the Blend Mode to Screen. Lastly, we'll blur the snow slightly. Go back to Filter, Blur, and Gaussian Blur. Blur it 0.5 pixels. This is Marty from Blue Lightning TV. Thanks for watching.